Hi everyone! Do you remember the Sobel operator that I used in one of the previous videos for edge detection? The shader that I will demonstrate today will be based on a similar principle and its result will be an equally interesting effect. Let's take a look at how the algorithm for the emboss filter works and how to implement it as a shader. You might remember that we applied the edge detection shader to the entire screen because it processed the 3D scene this way. This time we will use a simple 2D texture, which is more suitable for the embossed effect. So I will create a new scene and insert a prepared texture to it, which will create a sprite 2D node. I will then adjust its parameters and add a shader material as usual. So right click create new scene emboss, okay, and the texture it should be right here, let's drag it over there, select and change the position, which should be to zero, 0, and let's reset the centered, now it is correct, great, and as I said, a new material, shader material, click and new shader which we will put to the shaders folder create and click to open okay so as i do always let's get rid of the code we won't need eh, sorry <laughs> vertex function and light function and <clears throat> so only the fragment function uh, remained in the code i will start by adding uniform parameters that will control the overall appearance of the emboss filter. There will be three in total, width, height and brightness. Let's do it. Uniform float emboss width with a hint range from 0 to 1 and 0, uh, 0 0.01 as a step and we'll start at 0.15 which turned out to be the best parameter for the best looking effect. Let's copy and paste and do the same for height. And finally we need brightness. So it would be uniform float brightness with a hint range from again from 0 to 1 and 0 0.01 and we'll start at 0 0.5. Okay. Now for the actual computation. Filters of this type use a so-called kernel, which is a 3 by 3 matrix containing coefficients for the given pixel and all its neighboring pixels. In the edge de detection shader, we also had a similar kernel. <laughs> we also had a similar kernel and the subsequent calculation will resemble that shader somewhat. First, I will write out what this matrix looks like. This is just uh, something for our convenience. It's definitely not necessary to include in the final code. Zero, zero. Eh, now, zero, negative one, and zero. And finally, zero, eh, zero and negative one. Very well. So this kernel will be useful when we apply the so-called convolution function to obtain, <coughs> to obtain the final color of the pixel. But first, we'll create a second 3x3 three three matrix, which we will fill with pixels from our texture. In reality, this will be an array of nine elements which is equivalent to such a matrix. So let's do it. Vec2 UV is standard UV. And now we need to prepare the mentioned uh, array that represents the matrix of pixels. And since the pixel is an RGB color, that's why we defined it as an array of vector three, vector three, vectors three. And now the, uh, 
cycle and the second cycle, the same one you may remember from the edge detection shader. So first for int row from 0 to 3, so I'll do 2 of course, and row plus plus, and inside the second cycle, so we so we iterate over the whole matrix, call 0, call is less than 3, and call plus plus, uh, sorry, plus plus. And what do we need to do inside? Define a new vector 2, that would be our UV vector, increased by the shift, defined by the matrix of surrounding pixels so we will use the row and column call values to define the coordinates of this particular cell it would be float of call minus one because we want to calculate values uh, negative one zero and one and the same for the rows and now you may remember in the uh, edge detection shader that we've been we uh, had been uh, multiplying by the screen pixel size now we need the emboss width this is a little bit different and since the value is still too high we will divide it by 100 or multiply by zero by point zero one okay that's the first coordinate and the second one would be float row minus one and again multiplied by this time emboss height and multiplied by 0 0.01 okay i think this is all on this line and finally we have to assign this new value to pixels and to calculate the correct index in the array we just multiply the current row by three and add the column and the value is the pixel of our current texture so it will be texture function texture <coughs> variable texture and new uv value and as you know we are using vector 3 but texture returns vector 4 so let's use only rgb component there is no need to use alpha okay and now for the mentioned convolution function each element of this matrix will be multiplied by the corresponding element of the kernel matrix since most of the kernel uh, matrix consists of zeros we will only need three operations for the three non-zero values uh, but first we need to convert the rgb pixel to a grayscale value as we will display our emboss effect in grayscale to achieve this we will add a helper function which I will place just above the fragment function. So that would be float, let's call it let's call it two gray. And the input parameter is the color in RGB format, vector three. And what we want to return is this color R plus color G plus color B divided by 3. Okay, so this is a simplified conversion of RGB to grayscale using the arithmetic mean of the individual color components. Ideally, we should also account for the luminance to consider the human eye sensitivity to different shades of color. However, in this case, a simpler solution will suffice. Okay, and now the promise convolution function. So, let's call it as <laughs> float and bus and it would be as i said multiplying each element by the corresponding element and adding them up so first we have two here in the kernel function uh, kernel matrix two multiplied by and we need the two gray value of the pixel which is pixel zero as it's at the coordinates zero zero now we have minus one so there is no need to multiply just to subtract two gray of pixels and the current coordinate is 
4. I see it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the middle. And finally, minus, again, multiplying by negative 1, 2 gray uh, pixels, and this time it's 8, the final, final element of the 3x3 three three matrix. Okay, and that's all we need. It remains to assign the resulting value to the color variable. We must not forget the brightness, which we will simply add to the emboss value, like this. Color is vector 4, that contains vector 3 of our emboss, plus brightness, and the final last component is alpha set to 1. Wait for it. Here we go. We can see the whole picture here. So, our effect is complete. Now, if we try to change the parameters in the inspector, we can observe how the emboss filter changes accordingly. So let's work with width. You can see it is getting blurred or something. Or if we put it to zero, it will just disappear completely. And as for the brightness, too bright, maybe too contrasty. I think that in the end, we might conclude that the default values give us the best result. Thank you for watching. The emboss filter is a common feature in many graphic programs, and maybe you'll find a use for it in your game, especially if you control the shader parameters dynamically from GDScript. And if you enjoyed the video, I would be very grateful for every like, subscribe, comment or share. Have a great time and see you in the next video.